Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm just getting into California. I did a big drive all the way here to film a video to educate you guys a little bit more on the DTG process. More importantly, I wanna showcase a brand that I think is doing amazing things here in this industry, which is Omniprint. And we're right in front of their headquarters and we're about to get started on showing you guys what they offer, but more importantly, what you can expect out of a DTG printer. All right, let's jump into this one. So more importantly, what I really wanna show you guys is the process of actually printing a shirt if you're gonna go with the DTG method. All right, their offices are right back here and we're gonna meet with the owner of this company who actually started this from the ground up himself. That's what made me really interested in wanting to work with them. So let's head on over there and let's see what they have to offer on the inside. I know it's gonna be very valuable information and I'm excited to get started. Let's do it. Guys, today what we're gonna cover is DTG and everything related to this machine right here. If you're not sure what DTG means, it means direct to garment, and it's essentially a printer which can print your designs directly from your computer. All right, as crazy as it sounds, this is possible for you to own, but before we jump into all those details, I really wanna jump into how this machine works and essentially what you can expect if you were to get one for your clothing brand. So the FreeJet 330TX Plus, which is the machine right here, this is something that you guys designed from the ground up, essentially. You built it, designed it, and it's all your technology. Yeah, exactly. Right? So that's that's crazy. I mean, like, for people starting a clothing line, you know, sometimes you want to build things from scratch, whether it's cut and sew. Uh, getting into hardware and print technology is no easy feat. So it's, it's crazy that you guys launched this and it's available, and um, it's already gotten product of the year two years in a row, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So Victor, how exactly does a DTG printer work? The idea is from your artwork, you can go directly on the piece of textile, garment, t-shirt, hoodie, hats, shoes, whatever is a textile you can print on. So essentially, it's taking the image from your computer, processing it, and the ink, ink jets out directly on the garment, making the image. So compared to other processes, there's a lot of steps in between that you don't have to do, like uh, prep the image, separate artwork, those kind of things. Um, and that's the major difference. Essentially, this technology works uh, uh, for a lot of online retailers, you know, where you have uh, you know, mass customization where you could still do volume, but the key is every single garment could be different. So that's the major difference that direct to garment offers. Nice, and, and what makes the FreeJet stand out from the competition in terms of how this functions versus how others work? Yeah, if we were to boil down a lot of the stuff that we do and that encompasses this product also is the simplicity and profitability. So we wanna make things that are simple to use and also give our customers profitability. And that's that's the main thing that, that this machine offers. So the main difference compared to other products is our cost per print is the lowest in the industry. That's because versus using cartridge based systems, we use a bulk ink system that people refill. So our cost per liter is cheaper and, and uh, we put less ink out than most printers out there on the garment and that, that gives us the lowest cost per print. Another difference that we have is we, we give customers the best quality printed output that, that you can get. So that's because we print on a very high resolution. We print at 1440 DPI, kind of as our mid-range resolution. And that gives you the tones that you need for full color printing and also still keeps in with the, the low cost per print. And then something with this machine too is that it actually moves instead of this panel moving. So the machine moves with the print and that allows over earlier, I saw you guys were able to do hats and stuff on here yeah, too exactly. because of the way that it's set up. Yeah, so what happens is our print engine moves over the product. So that makes this base a very stable base. Uh, so you don't have like the bed moving, you don't have the product moving around during print, right? So mm -hmm. that, that still allows a good detail output, but it also gives you an ability to 
swap them out easily. Like for example, this just kind of comes out and you could prep another garment while this is printing and it registers back on, on the machine. The same thing with sleeves and hoodies and shoes and a lot of different products. If you could fit it underneath here, then you could print it. Oh, so people could actually print shoes on here yeah. on this machine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah, nuts. we've had some some customers do that. That's crazy. I mean, the reason that I really want to show you guys this this company is the fact that I did my research on all kinds of different printers, and I was always interested in the direct to garment and obviously the print on demand that I discuss on the channel. And uh, when they reached out, I was like, oh, I, ha I have heard of Omniprint. It's, it's amazing that you guys actually reached out because I wanted to give you guys a resource that you guys could find as a reliable and somebody that actually has built this up from scratch. So it's not just a, a, a company that's relabeling a product and selling it as their own. This is people that are actually building it here in the US. They're, they're, you guys are putting it together here, yeah. obviously, but parts come from all from over the world. Over, yep. But uh, yeah, you guys can count on them. Uh, checked out their support staff and everything that they got in place. So uh, definitely something that you guys should consider looking into. So uh, what would you say is the biggest reason that somebody should consider getting a DTG printer for their brand? I think that the, the biggest reason why, why somebody can benefit from a direct-to-garment printer is actually getting, to, getting themselves in a position to think about it a little bit different. Instead of thinking about, well, I need to create my, my products, uh, but then I need to pre-print thousands of sizes and colors and different, different uh, layouts and see what sells, we try to educate our customers more on hey, let's sell something first, then we produce it. And digital allows you to do it. So for example, if I, if I do a layout on our, on our uh, work stores that people get with our machines, and you can publish 10 products and see which customers buy them, then you print them. Versus a lot of the times, I've seen a lot of brands that don't start because the investment up front to do all the production run is just cost prohibitive, right? So, so a lot of the times they have to do it with screen printing, they have to do it some other methods, but there's minimums and there's color combinations that they have to do. Sometimes they have to dumb down their artwork. Mm -hmm. And if you're starting something, you wanna make sure that you're representing what you really wanna sell. And that's why we say, hey, turn it around. Let's sell something first. And then from there, you produce it. And the only way to do that is to direct to garment. Awesome. So what what relationship with an, uh, with a small business owner entrepreneur is the most ideal for you guys? So is it somebody that's just starting up and maybe barely able to afford it? Or is it somebody that's been in business and maybe is looking to bring things in house? What would you say is the type of entrepreneur that would benefit the most from actually having a machine like this in their in their home? Sure. So we, we've, you know, we've, we've been around almost 15 years. So we've seen anybody from, you know, mom and pop starting in their garage or in the living room, in the kitchen. You know, I've seen these machines everywhere. Uh, we've also seen them in plants where there's 50 plus machines being used. If you look at the footprint uh, and what you actually really need to produce, you can start this off, you know, at home. And we're gonna visit some brands where you can see the same things they started with one and they could end up with uh, you know, 10 machines by the, by the end of the year because you could easily scale it. It's all about how much are you doing per day, right? So I would say if you're in a position where you could sell 10 shirts a day, then you can afford to get a machine mm -hmm. because it's all about uh, if you're gonna make profit, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're at 10 shirts at 50 bucks or 30 bucks, depending on what your brand is charging and you can give the customers that value, then you're able to get into this kind of machinery. That's awesome. And uh, what's the learning curve for somebody? Is this something that's kind of plug and play? They could plug it up to a wall and just start start grabbing their designs and throwing it up on the shirt? Or like, what's is there a learning curve to getting this going up? Yeah, it, it, overall, we think that the training is really important, right? So we actually offer our customers a full day of training with the machine, just because it's not necessarily learning the machine and learning to open the image and press print and the machine starts printing. That's actually the easiest part. It's more of we're, we're training somebody on how to do apparel, right? How to print water-based inks on all different types of fabrics, right? So we're teaching somebody on how to, how to do this trade a lot of the times, right? So that in itself has a learning curve. So we actually spend a lot of time on the machine, 
how to cure, which products to use, all those kind of things, but also, hey, where, where can you sell your shirts at? Um, you know, how can you make some money? So th those kind of things are also part of the resources that we give our customers. So. That makes sense. So one of the things that, that, that always continuously comes up when, when people are you know, considering to do screen printing um, and they hear about maybe direct-to-garment machines is that, hey, it won't last as long or maybe it'll start flaking or it's not the best quality print. What do you, what do you have to say about that process or people that may have experienced something like that in the past? Yeah, so this process is, I would say, on the older side, maybe 18, 20 years old, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's also been more mature, I would say, in the last 10 years. So a lot of the mentality is pretty old. Um, the, the chemicals have come a long way, uh, the inks, uh, the processes, everything where you can get very close, if not the same or better washability than, than screen printing. So it's all about what you're using. So I was showing you guys earlier in the ink lab, but the thing is, is uh, we take a lot of responsibility into making the products better, right? So we'll formulate the pre-treat and we'll, we'll formulate different things to increase the washability. And, and for example, we're the only ones that can do 100% dark poly on this kind of machine, right? So that's because whatever we identify from our customer base, I could take to the team and I could say, hey, you know what? This is going to benefit them. Let's work on it. Versus, hey, we're just buying the chemicals from somebody and they said it can't be done, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, I love stuff that can't be done because it uh, <laughs> fires right. us up. Right, right. When I've gone to DTG, yeah, they've told me I couldn't print on poly and I was just like, okay, well, it makes sense because uh, it can absorb uh, the inks all the way like cottons can. A lot of them just recommend 100% cotton. So, how was it that you guys were able to pull it off? And for everybody watching, that's like, there's no way I could print on poly. What yeah. do you say to them? <laughs> well, uh, the main thing is we'll show you guys, right? So, the proof is in the Pudding. A lot of the, the innovations, I would say, come from the need of our customers, right? So they say, well, yeah, I'll buy a machine, but I really need to do blends. I really need to do, uh, you know, sportswear. You know how big, you know, all the athleisure stuff is right now. So that's kind of what guided us to focus on this for a while. So if you guys uh, are in any of the, the local shows, uh, follow us on our pages. We're, we do about 30 shows a year, and we're demonstrating, uh, typically at all the shows, we'll print a dark poly, uh, how it's done, and then th those are also the samples that we send out. So mm. it, it's just a difference in the chemicals. If you think about it this way, a lot of those synthetic fabrics are made to not allow anything to, to adhere to them, right? So you just have to make this, a stronger adhesive to be able to have it stick and it still be quality and still feel nice. So as you can see, a lot of the samples that we have here, yep. Uh, we'll show tri blends, which are very difficult to do in uh, direct to garment, and then 100% dark polys. It's fairly new, it's about a, a year and a half old that we started doing this. And I would say more in a reliable way where you can actually pre treat, load it, print, and cure it, and it washes well. You don't have to do any, you know, wait two days and let it dry and those things. No, I'm talking about in a production environment that you could do it. So, the market still hasn't caught up to us, but by the time they do, we'll be in the next innovation. So yeah, it's crazy. What, like to do it. It's crazy what they're developing <laughs> here. They were showing me some stuff, and uh, it's going to be exciting. It's yeah, going to be exciting to see. Yeah. So we talked about the difference between the competition and your guys' business, but what's the difference between the machines that you guys carry? So I see that there's a 330TX Plus, which is probably the most popular that I've seen online. What other models are available to them, and what are the major differences between each of them? Yeah, so essentially we have the 330TX Plus and the 330TX. The main difference is just the kind of materials that you want to print on. The Plus has a, uh, a system that allows the, the white ink to circulate and it also will print on the dark polys like we were talking about and the tri-blends and all that. So it has also different ink technology in it. So that's actually the main difference. So if you uh, just want to do the cotton, if you want to do similar to what the other products are out there doing, then you would get the 330TX. If that's your customer base just is doing cotton and, and mostly cotton shirts, then we recommend that one because there's no point in spending more money when, when your customers aren't going to pay you for it. So that's kind of the, the main differences that we have there. We also have the 500TX uh, and that one is just a bigger print area. So 
if you're doing all overs or towels or some other specialty products, mm -hmm. then that's when we'll jump you to the to the bigger machine. To the 500 yeah. machine, okay. So then uh, obviously there's a question on top of everybody's mind that's probably watching this video is, what type of methods or what type of payments do you accept or what can they kind of expect to maybe either pay for it or what does it take for them to get this in their house? We'll take anything. We'll take Bitcoin, <laughs> we'll take, you know, uh, gold. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we have different ways depending on where your, uh, where your business is. So we take a lot of responsibility not only in training you on the product and showing you the benefits of, of you know, if, if it's going to work for your business, we do that same thing for the financial side. So we have close relationships with financing and you know leasing companies, banks, uh, you know good good uh, even good credit cards that'll benefit your business. So every customer has kind of a unique difference uh, on financial needs, but but if you're in a position where you could finance something like this, we know how to have you finance it. Obviously, if you have all the money and you want to send it to us, then we'll that works that too. too. All right, so they accept <laughs> anything. No. Yeah. No. Man, so we just covered a lot of amazing information and uh, I really want to get down into the details of how this thing works. So can we fire this thing up and start something? Let's do it. Cool. cool. So now that we discuss how the machine actually works, I want to walk you through the process of what it's going to take to actually create and put a design on a shirt. So this one right here is actually 100% polyester. As you guys can, may or may not be able to read there, it's 100%. So this is one of those more of the dry wickening style shirts which is very common for athletic wear so if you guys like we discussed in the video uh, most DTG printers say that you can't print on polyester so we're gonna see how that comes out with this thing so we're gonna start with this machine right here and essentially what this machine does this is a, a pretreatment machine so what, what it essentially does it it removes human error from the pretreatment process which Victor discusses super important to making sure that the inks and the print adheres to it so we're just gonna load this thing up um, essentially you're gonna put it right in there spread it around keep it flat carpenter's dream there we go. And the preset settings are already set, so depending on the material type the, and, and the training that they give you guys here, they'll help you set up your own. Hit the start. It's crazy fast, look at that. So now you have a pre-treated hit on the shirt. And we bring it over to the actual press. So set up the shirt, put it right nicely on there, grab your paper, bring it down. And it's now ready to go to print. So to print your artwork, you simply want to open the file. Uh, and this this would be uh, you know a, a 300 DPI image file. You open it up. We're gonna tell it that we're going on dark poly, and that's what the setting here for the uh, print environment. And uh, you, you preview it, and you'll see the the size. Uh, and then you just send it to print. So now that we got the artwork, what goes on from here? So um, right now we're using 100% dark poly T-shirt. So those are fairly thin. So what the machine does is it'll set itself up at the right height uh, and it'll read the garment so that it uh, does its own setting uh, and it's not too far or not too, not too close to the material. I just press the button here and I'll lower it and it'll come over the fabric. Uh, there's actually a little laser that's reading the, the material. Uh, so if you have a hoodie or a towel or you know thick products, uh, the machine will set, set itself up uh, automatically. So essentially, like you were describing, I, I see the bottles back here. And uh, so one of the things that we were talking about is how more cost effective it is to use this type of printing system. Um, how much more effective is it in terms price-wise? Like how much are consumers saving? Yeah, so essentially when you move on to uh, buying the inks and liters, uh, you're saving about a third of your, your uh, ink costs, right? Uh, so versus using a cartridge uh, and sometimes there's still ink left inside the cartridge uh, when the machine tells you to replace it. Here, um, 
you just have your, your uh, inks and liters and you just pour it in depending on which color is, uh, is out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the machine is kind of checking the, the uh, levels and uh, it'll alert you if some colors are low and then you just look in the back and pour some more in. That's awesome. Another, uh, if you could look at the image, uh, another way that the, uh, the software saves money is, for example, here you'll notice that we're not printing 100% solid white ink behind it. So the machine's only gonna print white where, where it needs it. So if you have like a dark brown or a dark red or, or uh, you know, in any of those images, uh, it's actually gonna use the shirt as a color. Oh, wow. uh, and it'll, it won't use white ink. It'll, shoot, it'll just uh, save that ink uh, and then go over it with the correct colors. So it gives you a good feel on the shirt, but it also saves a ton in ink. So uh, that's one of the differences on how having uh, a good software to run the machine gives you good color and also saves you money on inks. That's awesome, that's awesome. So right here we're printing on 100% polyester, so it's laying out the base print because it is a black shirt and yeah. you, need a, you need some colors to pop. Exactly. On average, how long does it take to print like a black shirt or a dark shirt? Yeah, a dark shirt is about five minutes on average and it just depends on, we're doing the full size print here. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that'll be your normal on a dark shirt. Uh, light shirt, you're anywhere between a minute and two minutes uh, for a similar size graphic. So the final image on this has multiple colors. Um, what would you say is a major difference between doing a screen print versus a DTG? When it yeah, so and in uh, DTG, you don't have a limit of colors. So for example, on this artwork, you're gonna see so many different tones and so many different colors. And screen print, what you would have to do is reduce the amount of colors to four or five whatever the, the, your screen printer will tell you, you have to reduce it to. So that'll limit your quality. Uh, it'll make it look grainier and you don't, you don't have that same output. So one of the benefits of using digital is however you see it on the screen, it'll come out on your shirt. Make sure you get it real flat. Your neck is down there. Grab a paper and this is the final Press to cure it. Full 90 seconds. Fresh off the press, as you guys can see, 100% polyester, adhered perfectly, feels good, it's ready to be worn. Victor, I appreciate you guys for having us here thank today. You for coming. And thank you for sharing your knowledge and more importantly, what you guys have to offer to entrepreneurs all around the world. And uh, we were talking about some of the things that they're working on, aside from just this, like the work program and all kinds of crazy, cool uh, innovations that you guys are doing in the industry. So I'm sure this isn't gonna be the last time you guys hear of Omniprint. I know that there's gonna be a lot more coming down the pipeline. So if you guys have any questions, leave your comments down below and make sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, check out the Omniprint channel for more information, which I'll also link up in the cards right up above. And if you guys have any questions with them or wanna get in contact with them, hit the link right down below this video, which will take you to a customer service page where you guys can learn more information about what it'll take to get one of these to your home. Perfect, so I'll see you guys on the next video. Hey, what's up guys? So we're just getting into Costa Mesa area. This is Newport or Costa Mesa? Wake up. <laughs> Victor, very nice to meet you, man. John, Appreciate welcome. you for coming out, brother. Oh, let's redo that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>